you don't need a better profile. You don't need a better portfolio. You don't need more five-star reviews. I'm going to share with you how to make $100,000 a year on Upwork, even if you have no degree, no experience, it doesn't matter. Having a better profile, having a great portfolio, having more five-star reviews, they definitely help. All right, they're all good things to have, but how many freelancers have amazing profiles, ton of five-star reviews, they have amazing portfolio. They've been doing this for years and they're still struggling to find enough jobs. They're still struggling to get paid a good hourly rate. They're still not getting paid half of what they feel they deserve. I wanna ask you this, if a good profile, a good portfolio, five-star reviews was what you need to be able to succeed and become a prosperous freelancer, why is it that so many freelancers have all these things and despite that, they still don't make a lot of money? I'm gonna share with you the real key to success as a freelancer, the real key that most freelancers, even those who have experience, do not get. If you've been on Upwork for a couple of years and you're still not making the amount of money that you feel you deserve, if you're still not making six figures, it's probably because you need to stop treating your clients like disposable pieces of trash. Most freelancers, what they do, they send proposals, they get a contract, they do the contract for the client and they never talk to the client again. They didn't over deliver, they just delivered the bare minimum they could so they could get paid. And what happens is the client never wants to come back and you never try to foster a bigger relationship with a client. You never try to make the client see you as an expert or advisor that they can call upon when they need help. They just see you as a disposable freelancer because you treat them as a disposable piece of trash. So now you need to stop acting like a disposable piece of trash freelancer and start acting like a real professional. Think about it. How many businesses, how many agencies are in your area? Do you think they really treat the client that way? The real key to success in business as a freelancer or as an agency is to start treating your clients as if they are the most valuable resource that you have. Clients are like assets. They come back to you when they need more help. It's like buying a house. You have tenants who pay you every couple of months. Clients are kind of like that. As long as you keep them happy and keep them yours, they come back and pay you and give you more jobs over and over again over the next couple of years. So your biggest key to success as a freelancer is actually developing those clients into long-term business assets that can pay you over and over again. One of the things you don't realize is that the first job that you have with almost every client tends to be the one that pays the least. And the reason for that is that the client doesn't already trust you. And so it's very difficult to charge high hourly rates and a lot of money for these projects. But once you've developed those relationships, once those, once those clients like you, trust you, have worked with you for a couple of times, they know that you do a good job, they know that they can trust you to do good work and not cut corners, that they wanna work with you and not risk working with anyone else, that's the point where you can offer your same services for more money and guess what? They're gonna wanna work with you. You guys do not realize how many Upwork freelancers are just lazy ass bitches who don't do their best when they're working with these clients. They're just cutting corners everywhere. They're just delivering the bare minimum. They're not building any relationship with the client. They're not asking client questions. They're not offering services outside what they're offering. Once the project is done, they never contact the client again. What do you think happens with the clients? Do you think they're really satisfied? The freelancer delivered the bare minimum. And even then, we've worked with freelancers who we have asked them to give us email addresses and names of businesses that we could contact with our agency. And almost we've, we've actually hired five freelancers at once to see which ones did a good job. And each and every single one of them cut corners and gave us fake businesses with fake information, or they gave us businesses that we told them are the types of businesses that we do not want to work with. You have no idea how many freelancers would just deliver a product, a website, or any type of product, but what, let's take a website as an example. Look at the website they made, it looks good, but when you look at the code, it's just a piece of trash. It's filled with errors, vulnerabilities, coded in a way that looks good on one platform, looks like shit on others. Stop cutting corners. Why do you think clients don't come back to you? Why do you think you have to spend all your fucking time, even though you've been spending years in this business, you still have to spend all your fucking time looking for work. Why do you think that happens? It's because 
you don't do your best to make sure that your clients become valuable assets who want to come back. Why would clients come back to you if you cut corners and if you don't build relationships with them? Most of our clients that we've worked with have almost become friends. You have no idea how many times when we're working with local clients, they have wanted to invite us to go eat dinner or have invited us to different things. And because we've fostered this type of relationship where they trust us, they like us, they want to invite us. You're not going to do that on Upwork because most of these clients are not going to be local, but still understand that the key to freelancing in business as a small business offering services is to develop these relationships. Look, there's something you need to understand is that most freelancers do not do a good job. And you find finally a good freelancer who does the work. He does his best. What happens is that you want to keep working with this freelancer. The next time that you need to work with a freelancer who has that sort of skill set, who do you think you're going to work with? You're going to try to work with any freelancer on Upwork and hope that they're going to do a good job? Or are you going to keep working with a freelancer that you worked before and know that he does a good job, he's professional, and that you probably like? Because what we do is that when we find clients, the first thing we do is we try to build a relationship as an advisor. We just don't want to be the nameless freelancer working with them. We want to be the advisor that they know that if they need help, if they have questions about our expertise, in our case, we offer offer Google ads, we offer Facebook ads, and we also offer web development. In our case, we can advise a client on any of those and being a generalist allows us to be an advisor on many topics and help the client. What happens is that when we start working with the clients, the first thing we do is we don't, don't just do the work for them. We meet them, we understand their requirements and we go look at their Facebook, their Google, all they're doing with their advertising or all we, they're doing that's within our area of expertise and we look at everything that could be improved and we do do the work that the client asks us on the first project but we also on top of that offer them to get on call with us and we say something like hey would you like to get on a call with us for five minutes we're going to share with you other things that you could do for free like we're, we're not going to charge you anything it's just advice for you that you could apply on your facebook on your google ads or anything else that that could help you get more clients and usually they're really happy about that this develops the relationship and allows them to understand that you're not just there to do the work you're genuinely interested in their results and you're genuinely doing your own work and looking at what their business is doing and so what happens is that after the call after they've seen that you are competent and that you care you tell them you have questions uh, we can help you with that if you need help about anything else that falls within our expertise and you want to hire someone, we're willing to do that with you and we're willing to call with you for free. These clients tend to really like the experience and see that you're not just another nameless freelancer. You're that guy who cared enough to actually look at all their business, look at everything they do wrong. And on top of that, what they hired you for, you over delivered on what was on the contract. When you go on Upwork and these platforms and the majority of people working on these platforms actually under deliver or deliver barely what is on the contract. And actually, when you look at what they do, they cut corners everywhere. When you compare that with what we do and what we recommend you to do, which is becoming an expert advisor, what happens is that yes, on your first couple of jobs, you spend more hours without, without getting paid more. But what happens is that when you're a freelancer or business owner, that relationship that you build is the asset that allows you to charge more money in the future. Because what happens is that when this client, let's say you're a web developer, you do a, a web page for them, the next time they need an update on their web page, they might come back to you. They're probably going to come back to you if you did a really good job and you've developed this relationship as an advisor. And at that point, you can say, hey, OK, I'm going to do it for you. But uh, my hourly rate is higher than it was before. This is my new hourly rate. And, you know, you offer your service. That client could at that point try to find another freelancer cheaper than you. But what do you think they're going to do in a situation where notice that most freelancers under deliver? What do you think they're going to do? Do you think they're going to try to find someone else cheaper? Or do you think they're going to be willing to pay more money to keep working with you, especially when they like you, when they see how much you care about their business? You guys, you need to understand that you're not in the business of making money in the short term. And when you're starting out your career, you're in the business of building assets, building customer relationships. They're going to allow you to make a lot more money in the future. And most of your problems right now stem from the fact that you spend all of your time almost all of your time 
not getting paid because you're looking for clients. And the reason you spend so much time looking for clients is that no one comes back to you and you don't get referrals. Your clients don't refer other people to you. If you actually over delivered, if you build those types of relationships, what happens is that not only can you charge more per hour to every single one of your clients, on top of that, you have to spend less hours a week without getting paid trying to find jobs. And so the percentage of the hours that you work are paid. Then you get to a point, so many clients coming back, you have a couple of clients who come back, you keep getting clients by sending proposals, you get a couple more clients on top of your previous clients, some of these will come back, you develop more and more business relationships, and then you start getting more and more of your referrals and clients to come back. And at some point, you might end up with such a reputation and so many returning clients, so many referrals that you have too many jobs. What are you going to do? right? You're not going to start working 80 hours a week. You're not going to start working 90 hours a week to fit everyone's requirements. At that point, you can just choose to work with who you want to work with, and then you can raise your prices and maybe keep only the clients that are willing to pay you. Or you could choose to only work with the clients you like, depending on how you want to deal with that problem. It's really a good problem to have to deal with to have too many clients. Like that's a situation that you cannot build if you treat all your clients like pieces of trash that you just discard after you finish a project. You don't want to cut corners because yes, maybe it's a good thing to do in the short term, but in the long term, it's actually what steals most of your earning potential and most of your job security because you don't know what the job market is going to look like in the future, but positioning yourself as an expert in building these relationships increases the chance that even if something happens, even with ChatGPT, the people in your job area might get replaced. If you are one of the most valuable people in that job market, in that career skill, and you have these business relationships, you're the least likely guy to get replaced, right? Because even if the number of jobs available decreases, you're the first pick for most clients. But all of this starts with being able to send proposals. When you're starting out, you don't have previous clients that you can work with. Maybe you don't even have clients right now that you can try to build long-term relationships with. And so you need to start by finding your first clients. And the way you do that is by making proposals on Upwork, because when you're starting out, it's very difficult to have a profile that ranks in the search results. So clients are not going to find you. You're going to have to go to the clients and offer them your services. So all of this starts with being able to build good proposals. And so I made a PDF guide, a free PDF guide that you can get that shares with you step-by-step -step guide to make good proposals that stand out. It also includes a template that you can follow. It's really amazing. If you want to step up your proposal game, see exactly how it's done, how to write good proposals, what to write in your good proposals. Check the link in the description. Go check it out. It's 100% free and could help you a lot. With that, if you have any questions about this topic or about any other topic about freelancing or other videos that you would like me to cover, ask me in the comments below. I'll help you if I can. And with that, I wish you a great day. See you soon.